Hurt Joey. I love it. Come on, let's dance. Come on, let's go down. Four, five, six, seven, five. You're not doing so badly. Joey, that's your folks. There's been an accident. say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. Come on, two try. No, I don't want to. Come on. No, I don't know how. Just hold on. You've seen me do it a hundred times. Just hold it here. Put your hand there. That's it. Oof. If we catch something, we're throwing it back. I think we got something, babe. What? Wait, 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 pull it in. No, I don't want to. Pull it in. Oh. What is that? Oh, you know I will. Less muscle, right? <laughs> Here, you need this. Peach. 
sake, Joe, use a little more love and a little less muscle. I have the distinguished honor of presenting the President of the United States. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. I ask that the Congress declare that since the unprovoked and dastardly attack by Japan on Sunday, December 7th, 1941, a state of war has existed between the United States and the Japanese Empire. Did you hear? The whole world's gone crazy. Take care of my girl till I get back. Here. Here. I want you to have this. My father gave it to me over 40 years ago. It got me through some tough times. I think it's time you had it to strengthen you. I remember this. Take care of yourself. Thanks, Grandpa. Eat well. You come back to me, okay? I don't care what you do or how you do it, you just come back. I love you. Dear Claire, I received your photo today. Funny what you think about when you're so far from home. I miss fixing planes with you and holding you close. I'll bring your picture with me. Tomorrow we're going out again. Lights out. I love you, Joe. Visibility over Germany should put it at 9,000 feet by 0800. 9,000 feet? The drone's gonna be like kicking a hornet's nest and having nowhere to run. Yeah, we got our backs, isn't that right, Gunner? Yes, sir. All right, let's do this, fellas. <clears throat> he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, from the noise and pestilence. Let's go, fellas. Elevators. Elevator check.
Missing in action, clear. It was announced in San Francisco half an hour ago by a high American official not identified as saying that Germany has surrendered unconditionally to the Allies. No strings attached. Home, Ray. So nice to see you. Congratulations on getting engaged. Come on in. Just such a surprise. So nice to see you. Just the other dishes. Excuse me. Oh, please come in and sit down. You. you look so well, Ray. Thank you. Gee, it's great to see you, Claire. <laughs> it's about Joe. I thought you would have known long before now. I saw Joe's plane go down. I know. It went down two years ago. Just waiting for him. He made it. There were a lot of shoots, Claire. And when you're counting from so far away, everyone just hopes all the guys got out. One of the guys couldn't jump. Joe was trying to save him. All the survivors are POWs now, so they're just starting to put the pieces together. There's a letter coming. Joe's my friend. I wanted to tell you first. Claire, if there's anything I can do, anything at all. Oh my goodness, look at me. I have no manners. I didn't even ask you if you wanted a tea or anything. Would you like some? Claire, if you... Come here. Honey, you're, you're gonna be okay.
I'll be down at the hangar if you need me. It's a nice day, isn't it? Yeah. I was looking through the advertisements for work. I thought maybe I could help you down at the hangar instead. Hmm. Well, there's not much going on down there, but I'd be grateful for the company. Of course, I couldn't pay you much. too hot, I just go outside for a spell and sit under the shade. Grandpa, what's happened? <laughs> when the war broke out, everybody who could fly went overseas. I told them about a month ago to shut all this down. So how are you supposed to run a business when you can't even have a phone or electricity? <laughs> There's not much business left to run. Why didn't you say something? Because you had troubles of your own. No sense in both of us worrying about that. Well, there's only one thing we can do. We're just going to have to find some new business. Well, I've tried. <laughs> there's not anything around here. Well, we'll just have to go somewhere else and bring it in here. That was Tanner crop dusting. I talked to them a year ago. No business there. Well, that was a year ago. He just bought five PT-17s from government surplus, and he wants us to do the conversion. Well, well, well. Well, find out where he bought them. We might get some parts from old Uncle Sam. Been, uh, thinking. Mm -hmm. What about? Maybe you ought to find something else to do. Why am I doing something wrong? No, no, nothing like that. Just that maybe this is not the right place for you. This is where I want to be. You're my family. Honey. Maggie and Ray are starting their own family. And the prettiest girl in Boone City is, <laughs> is, is cleaning blow-by oil off a steerman. It doesn't make any sense. I like it. Why are you doing this? Because there's more to life than fixing airplanes and having dinner every night with an old man. Oh, I hope Ray doesn't mind I spent so much, but this was so precious. Oh, hey. Hello. Hi, honey. Lovely. So, Maggie, you got any money left for lunch, or is it back to washing dishes in the back? Oh, Ray, I'm very frugal. I don't worry, kids. Lunch is on me. Oh. Well, what am I going to nice. have? <laughs> I'm on my way to Sacramento. Joe lives here. Joe Kelly? I was going to try to look him up. Well, oh, he's dead. You knew that. I didn't know that. When did he die? 
in the crash with you. He was trying no, to... No, Ray. Joe didn't die in a crash. And I even saw him a year later. <sighs> oh, hi. I'm sorry. This Maggie, this is Pete, Joe's co-pilot. How do you do? Hi. He says Joe might still be alive. What about Claire? Joe's Claire? Yeah, Pete. You're gonna have to tell her what you just told me. Of course. This is good news, right? Yeah. Hey. Hey. Claire, this is Pete. This is Doug. Hi. Hi. Nice hey, to nice to meet you. Hello. Have a seat. Claire, I was Joe's co-pilot. I was in the plane that went down. And there's been a mistake. Joe didn't die in the crash. We were all picked up by German patrols and put in separate POW camps. But then I saw him a year later. He was in the back of a truck with some guards. I yelled to him. I don't know if he heard me. Are you sure? Yes. You think that he might still be alive? He was the last time I saw him. I'm sorry. Could you excuse me for a moment? Claire. Claire, wait. I know that Joe is out there. I can feel it. I... I have to think. I'm sorry. Chambers for seeing me. Yes. Well, Doug tells me that you're looking for your husband who went down in a B-24 somewhere in Germany. Is that right? Yes, sir, it is. Well, why would you come here? The official report says that your husband was killed when he went down with his airplane. Because at the funeral, all we did was bury dog tags. Couldn't there be some sort of mistake? Now, I know it says nobody was found, but I know lots of reports like that. Joe Kelly is buried somewhere in Europe. Now, I don't want to sound hard-hearted, but that's happened to a lot of families. I know someone who saw him a year after he supposedly died. Could he be in a military hospital or anything? Young lady, if Joe Kelly had let himself be known, we would have contacted you. What if he was injured so badly that he doesn't... Listen, Claire, Joe Kelly's a hero. Because of him, most of his crew survived. Unfortunately, it looks like he wasn't one of them. Now, you can go in there and check for yourself if you'd like, but it's tough in there, even if you do it on a daily basis. I need to. Shot down in 43. I don't know much. I... That's interesting. I spent quite a bit of time in German hospitals. We may have crossed paths, particularly if he was badly injured. And then when I was released from hospital, they sent me to Stalag Luft One. That was the only real facility they had to handle any of us that still had medical problems. I have to tell you, 
I don't remember the name, Joe Kelly. Of course, I can't steer you in the right direction. Now, don't get your hopes up too much, but this Will Martin fellow, he did know everybody, everybody knew him. He's quite a card. I think you're going to enjoy him. He's at a small airfield just before you get to Harris. Thank you. The minute that Tommy gets your plane fixed, someone will call you. Until then, keep your hat on, honey. All right. Excuse me, is this William Martin's business? Who wants to know? I huh? do. Huh? I'm Will Martin. I'm gonna help you, beautiful. Oh, good. Casanova's back. The village is safe again. Don't mind, Jeannie. She flunked out of charm school. <laughs> she punched the instructor. I did. I'm sorry. I was just wondering if I could have a moment of your time. I'm sure you're busy, but... I'm not too busy for you. Come on in my office. Excuse me. Thank you very much for your time. I've just been to the VA. Chaplain Bain says that you were in Stalaglyph 1 during the war. Yeah, I was. Did you happen to know a Captain Joe Kelly while you were there? No, didn't know. If he was there, I'd have known. Tommy's got that part. He's gonna stop off and get something to eat. He was wondering if uh, he should pick up something for you. Uh, no, I might have plans. Okay. Bill, honey, take a seat. So, uh, should we go get something? We could, uh, continue to talk? No, actually, I I'm sorry. I, I don't have time. I have to go. Thank you for your time. You should get some food with your friend. Did you tell Handsome he can eat by himself? <laughs> yes, I did. Good girl. Excuse me. Hey, Bill. Come on in. What? <laughs> Hi, hon. Come in. Take any seat. I'll be with you right away. Oh, no, I, I don't want to eat. I, I think I need a garage. I've overheated my car. Oh, well, Chester's the only one left. It's a couple of miles out on the highway. I don't think my car can drive that far. There's no other mechanics in town? Oh, no, there's only one garage. Now, there's plenty of fellas around here that can fix things. I mean, the best mechanic in town's sitting right over there. Tommy went out to his truck. He forgot his wallet again. Oh, there. Hey, Tommy. This young gal needs your help. Did this usually happens after you eat the meatloaf. Oh, quiet, Everett. Tommy, why don't you go check on her car, and I'll give her something to eat. Where's your car, ma'am? It's outside out there. Hmm. 
Joe. Mike, steak and eggs. That'll help. No, are you sure you want to do that, Ruby? She still looks a little shaky to me. Good morning, you Everett. I need to help him. No, no. You need to eat. Now, he knows what he's doing. He'll take good care of your car. I gotta give him my keys. Fun. You sure you're okay? I've just been driving all day. I'm really tired. Can I get your keys? Oh, sure. I think they're in the car. What was your name again? Tommy, did you turn it over? Thank you. Okay, that's fine, man. Got pretty hot. Fixed the hose, but uh, could have damaged the engine pretty good. Can you fix it? I'd, I'd like to. Sorry. What was your name? My partner and I, we, we've got a lot of work to do, and we've got this huge deadline coming up. But uh, Chester will be able to take care of you. You from around here? Ben City. Well, I won't get you there, but uh, you keep some water in it. Get you around town for a few days. Just uh, take it on over to Chester. He's real good. He'll fix it up all right for you. Can I pay for your trip? Oh, there's no trouble at all, ma'am. Tommy? Thank you for... Thank you. It's my pleasure, Claire. Over at the airfield, if you need anything else, I'm sure I'll see you around. Are you from here? No. Nope. Remember not to drive too far with your car like that. find a better mechanic within a hundred miles of here. He was nice. Yeah. He and Will Martin on the airfield on the way into town. That one with the B-24 in it? Yeah, that's the one. Well, Kara got a job at the hospital. Hey, eat up. How's your car, hon? Well, it won't be making it to Boone City. Is there a motel or anything like that around? Oh, my, my sister has a boarding house just down the street, and it's very close to the nice restaurants in town. <laughs> Want to think about it? Just got off the bus? Of course you did, silly. Yeah, I miss my mom. She's working today. Well, when is she not? Yeah. Anyway, we'll see you later. Bye, All right, bye. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. What are you doing here? Why didn't you call? I didn't want you to talk me out of it. Hey, everybody. Sherry's home. Hi. Hi, Everett. Hi, Doc. 
water. Uh, excuse us. Here, baby. Oh. You look older. <laughs> Mom, you saw me last Easter. Well, why are you back so soon? I don't know. I was worried about you, I guess. What about school? I'll finish next semester. How about that boy you were seeing, the one with the funny name? <laughs> Percy. Percy. <laughs> He's all right. He knows this is something I have to do. I'm not a charity case, you know? Forgot to bring it last time. Mom, we haven't talked about Stephen since he was killed. Is that why you came back? Yes. And the fact that you can't keep a waitress here for more than a week. Just go fresh and hop in. You can give me a hand later. You look beautiful. I'll, I'll have your check right away. Grandpa. I found him. Where are you? I'm in Harris. I'm at Miss Layton's boarding house. Harris? I, I could get there by morning if you left right now. No, 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 wait. Something's wrong with him. He, he doesn't know who I am. Oh, my. I'll call Colonel Chambers and see what I should do. I'll call you in the morning. Okay? All right. I'll wait to hear from you. I love you, Grandpa. I love you, too. Oh, Grandpa. Claire. I'm so glad you're here. Oh, yes, yes, so. Please sit. Sit. Dr. Kessler, we're here to find out what happened to my grandson. Well, um, Claire told me on the phone that he doesn't remember her, and um, he's answering to another name. Outside of this personality shift, is he showing any other outward signs of mental instability? Right, well, without an examination, all we have is guesses. But um, it is possible that uh, blunt force trauma to the head or severe shock could cause a condition called dissociative identity disorder. It can be caused by physical, chemical, or psychological aberrations. So no two cases are alike. It's pretty fascinating, really. We've seen a lot more cases ever since the war. Doctor, as fascinating as it is to you, we're talking about my grandson, Claire's husband. Can we take him home? No, sir, I don't think you can. Without letting the mind heal on its own time. Now, he can be capable of living a normal life, as impaired as it may seem. It's not a normal life he's living with another person. Well, I'm shocked his existing environment could be very damaging. In fact, I think we're lucky that seeing you, Miss Kelly, didn't damage him further. What do you mean, damage him further? Look, I, um... I realize you're very excited about having found Joe, but you have to resist trying to remind him of who he was, rather, who he is. Look, Mr. Kelly, I'm gonna shoot it to you straight. Having seen Claire, seeing you might just cause him to shut down. What are we supposed to do? Just sit by while he builds another life for himself? No, no. 
Of course not. Um... Claire, he saw you. Did he react at all? Well, you stay near him. Maybe as um, his mind heals, he'll be able to accept the memory of her. Love is a very strong force. I've seen it keep soldiers alive on the battlefield when they shouldn't have a chance. Alone? Yes. It's your best bet. Sure looks that way. Those boys up in Denver won't be able to say we're too small to handle that contract now. Beat their deadline by 10 days. Finally getting some real money, get out of that hand to mouth. Yeah, well, take it easy there, partner. We only got one small plane. Yeah, well, when we get that contract, we'll be rolling in planes. And we got the best mechanic and the best dang pilot west of the Mississippi. We'll make it. When did you hire a new pilot? Jeannie? Huh? Will you please remind me why you're still here? Oh, no one else will put up with you. Oh. Right. Hey, Tommy, you gonna come down to Ruby's for lunch? Yeah, I'll see you there. What can I get for you? A cup of coffee. All right, I'll be right back with that. I'll take this chair. All right, uh, coffee for the morning. Well, what do we have here? Are you talking about the specials, or do you want to know what kind of soups we have? Claire, I didn't know you worked here. I, I have to earn enough money to get my car fixed, so... Did you take the Chester's? I did. He said it'll be about $100 or so. Wow. That is a pile of money. You should just uh, stay here. Marry me. Tommy, can I take your order, or you want me to get you something to drink? You can take my order. How's about uh, you and I go out for dinner this evening? I'll take whatever Ruby has on special and uh, a glass of lemonade. One special coming up. Excuse me. I'd like to order two. I'm sorry, Mr. Martin. What would you like to have? Just make it uh, two of the same. You got it. I don't think that Gail likes you. She'll come around. Bye. Hey, Claire, you don't stop on by the hangar any time. Really? I'd love to. Well, there's not much to see. But there will be. Well, I could come by tonight after work around, um, 6. I'll bring dinner. All right. Wonder what changed your mind. You know, people have wondered that for years, my friend, just how I do it. It's better not to question. Just observe, you know? Marvel. Yeah, well, Mr. Marvelous, don't forget. You're buying today. Peggy's my friend, right? Yeah. Hi. Hello, baby. Hello, Tommy. Hi, Rachel. Thanks for looking after Peggy. Put your bike in the hangar, honey. We gotta go. Uh, Claire, this is Rachel Thompson. Rachel, this is Claire Kelly. Hello. How do you do? Tommy, could I talk to you for a moment? Sure. Excuse me. I was wondering if you had any plans tonight. Oh, what did you have in mind? Dinner. I made a pot roast. Your favorite. 
Okay. Come on, honey. Uh, at the pass, Rachel was planning on me coming over and just made a big supper. She seems like a close friend. Yeah, well, I help her out with Peggy. I'll see you later. Since the war, they brought us to Camp Lucky Strike. I'd like to know about that. Well, there were thousands of GIs. Nobody cared who you were. Everybody's talking about home, except Tommy. So I figured he didn't have any place to go. So I offered him a spot back here. He took care of him. How are you holding up? <laughs> my shift is over. I think I'll go soak my feet. I don't know how you do it. Well, it could be. I'm stronger than you think. Mom, can we talk about Stephen? Talking about him's not going to bring him back, baby. But we can't just go on pretending that he never existed. Well, you know that's not what we're doing. No. It's just... Mom, I miss my big brother. There's just so much I wish I had said to him. You know what? I think he can hear you. I talk to him all the time. Jeannie, where did this come from? Oh, I got that in yesterday's mail. Isn't that the big contract you boys signed? I hope not. Well, what do you mean? Well, there's things in here I've never even heard of before. Well, maybe we'll... Well, this is my signature on this thing. I, I didn't sign this. Tell Will I want to see him as soon as he gets in. I know. Jenny, didn't you say he was going to be back here by 3? He said 3 o'clock. Where the heck is he, then? Well, who knows? We need to talk. What are you trying to do to us? Look, I went over the contracts. I was going to talk to you about it later, but there may be a, a small mistake. Mistake? How could you promise we can move this much cargo with only one airplane? You gonna attach a trailer to it or something? Tommy, if we didn't do this, they were gonna take the bid. They're gonna take our company, Will. Tommy, this is a really big opportunity for well, the two of us. Why did you sign my name to this thing? Tommy, when I was down there talking to the attorney, he specifically said to me that this guy has the right to foreclose on our business, Will. We don't deliver. What are you talking about? Things are gonna read this lousy contract. They can take everything. I, I'll call the guy up, Tommy. I'll get him to give us an extra week. An extra week? It wouldn't matter if they gave us an extra month, Will. We cannot move that much cargo. Tommy, look, I'm... God, you were fooled for signing this, Will. And you should have never signed my name to it. Jeannie, how much money do we have in the bank? Between 100 and 150. I'll be back in tomorrow. <sighs> well, Will always said I graduated from charm school. <laughs> I bet I could do a good job. <laughs> I know you could. I'm just not looking to hire any help right now. Well, I'm not really looking. But it never hurts to find out what's available, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are y'all talking about? Well, Tommy really lit into Will today. I never heard them. 
like that before. And Tommy's been real edgy lately. He thinks that uh, Will just about put us out of business. Is that right? Uh, that's right. You know, Tommy's been pretty hot. Well, it seems that contract they got has a few more paragraphs in it than Will thought it did. Oh, that's too bad. Mm. Those, you know, those boys have worked too hard to lose everything. <laughs> I just didn't know how hard it was going to be. Most people would have just given in and tried to push him. I've known him my whole life. And now it's just erased. I can't do it. I can't take it. Are we talking about what he needs or about what you need? Claire, you all right? I just keep thinking that if I look at him, I'll see him in there. I've seen it happen. I need you to keep thinking that way. Where's your dog tags, buddy? They're gonna kill you without those. fixing planes with you and holding you close. I'll bring your picture with me. Tomorrow we're going out again. I love you, Joe. Anything that I could do. Seems everyone from movies has some advice, thanks to Jeannie. Sorry, Jeannie. Sorry, right. most folks just want to help. Could be a lot of folks care about you. Could be bad news travels fast. A lot of folks do care about you, Tommy. Well, there's nothing that can be done now. <laughs> Maybe there is. Will committed us to move a lot more cargo than we could ever possibly move. The worst part is we might lose everything. Of course, you probably already knew that. Seems everybody does. No, it doesn't seem like much, but... This is all I got. Who owns that B-24 out front? Pigeons, owls, whatever. Do you think it could haul enough freight to satisfy your contract? What? Well, you need another plane, right? Claire, do you realize what it would take to get that thing in the air? Had to run to get here, didn't it? Claire, the problem is we don't have any money. If we had money, we could go out and buy another airplane. Well, if I could get you all the parts, do you think you could get it to run in time? Claire, you're working at Ruby's to get your car fixed. You got spare parts in that trunk of yours? I used to work at Kelly Airfield in Boone City. I was in charge of all the parts. I know somebody. He'll probably give us a couple of months to pay him back. What do you think? I think you're a dreamer. I'll think about it. Jeannie, may I borrow you?
Can you get a hold of Will? Tell him I need help with that B-24. Right now. Oh, mm -hmm. can you get a hold of Claire as well? Oh, yes. Hi. Hi, Claire. Hey, hot stuff. So, tea for dinner? Uh, actually, Rachel and Peggy will be joining us. Could you give us three sodas and a bomber? Sure. Uh, Claire, those parts came in. Can't thank you enough. Huh. Sure, anything I can do to help. Don't know what we could ever do to repay you. Just get that plane fixed. I'll get those sodas. Hi, Tommy. Hi, Peggy. Don't I get a hug? Hi, Will. I tell Hi, Rachel. Thank you. Have you guys ordered? Of course not. Claire just went to get us some sodas, and I ordered a bomber for Peggy. Now, what is a bomber, anyway? You don't know what a bomber is? <laughs> hey, Everett, what's a bomber? It's a big plane that drops bombs. I thought you'd know that. <laughs> a bomber's when you mix all the soda fountain flavors together. Well, this is nice. Which one of you are going to marry my mommy? Oh! Oops, excuse me. Excuse me. Claire, can you go back and help Mike with the potatoes? Claire. Sure. Gosh, Ruby, you make everybody that spill go back and peel potatoes? Ah, oh, sorry, no. You know, we're just, we're a little behind back there. So, okay, now. What do you folks have, baby? Macaroni and cheese. Okay. Claire, leave those potatoes alone. I thought I said you wanted me. No. I thought you needed a break. I'm really sorry out there. I didn't mean to spill that drink. You know, every time Tommy Warner comes in here, you get a little bit flustered. And turned around. Yeah, I know that. But darling, Will told me that when you first got to Harris, you were asking him about his time in the war. Now, I can't help thinking that you were looking for something more than war stories from Will. Uh, Ruby War changes things. That's all. Just trying to figure things out. Well, what is it about Tommy, honey? I can't explain it. Now, do you think you can get their order out to them without dropping the steak in Rachel's lap? No, I don't think I can. <laughs> but I'll take table four. Thank you. to the post office. Where should I put these? Oh, you can set them right over there on the crate. I think it's your fuel pump. Thank you. Sure. Looks beautiful. Yeah, I almost forgotten. I've been around a lot of airplanes, but this is my first time to be around a B-24. That's where I flew in the war. What was it like to fly it? You made it back.
Oh, she's getting there. I just wanted to bring that part by. Look forward to seeing you at the dance this weekend. Oh. Okay. So you got her job. Whoa, hey, buddy, you okay? Yeah, fine, just... Just got dizzy. You sure you're all right? Yeah, I'm fine. You can't fly like that. Are you sure? Yes. I'm just saying, she goes to the hangar a lot. She's just helping me fix a plane. Honestly, Tommy, why would she spend all her free time helping you fix that plane if she didn't want something from you? Rachel. One of these days, she's going to go back to wherever it is she came from. And I'll be here. So will I. Maybe. Well, I need to go get ready for the dance. It's just a plane. What's the matter, Rachel? My deadbeat partner won't dance with you? Uh, just... You got a headache, huh? Nah, don't worry about it. Come on, Rachel. I'll dance with you. Let's go swing. Have fun. Later. This is nice. It's the only hot spot we have here in Harris. We haven't danced here a couple times a year. I haven't danced in a long time. You like to dance? I used to. Do you want to dance? Uh, I don't think so.
Get him home. He needs some rest. We got this from here, okay? Thank you. Ruby. Hi. I was wondering if I could speak to you outside for a moment. Baby, will you keep an eye out? Sure. Okay. I'm real sorry, but I need to ask you for help. Anything? What? I need to go home tomorrow, and I need to borrow $75. I know it's a lot of money. Sure. I think this will cover it. Is this a wedding ring? Okay. I'll keep it safe for you. Hello. Dr. Kepler? Claire? Claire. Dr. Kessler, Mr. Bridges is here with me. Claire, there's a patient that I have to see. Please wait. Can I call you back? No, no, no. It's all right. I know what I have to do. I have to think, Ben. Hiya, Tester. Oh, hey, Claire. How you doing? I'm all right. You got my car finished? Well, I had out twice already this morning. She actually running pretty good. I just want to check on a couple of things, eh? Yeah? You, uh, still planning on leaving town today? Yes, sir, I am. Hmm. Well, you going to go by the airfield before you, uh, before you leave, the bomber should be uh, taking off shortly. No, I wasn't planning on it. Mm. Well, Ruby tells me you were you were a big part of that plane. I mm, suppose I was. Oh. Should cover it. Okay. All Thank right. you. Thank you, Chester. I guess she's ready to go.
She's running pretty smooth, huh? Feather number three, we're not, we're not gonna be able to keep up. Tommy, what's going on? Pete, we're not gonna be able to make it to those clouds. Tommy! Tommy, what are you talking about? Will? Yeah! Tommy! I don't know, I was just dreaming for a second. Yeah, well, get it together! Uh, I'm fine. Appreciate that. I'm worried about him. Okay. And thank you. Thank you. I mean, it's one of my boys. It's Colonel Baines from Stalag Luftwaffe. You gave your friend Will quite a scare there. Yeah, he's a good friend. Cares a lot about you. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers and under His, and under his wings you will find refuge. I'm going to walk to the pond. You want to come? No, thanks. I'm not getting around as well as I used to. I'll just stay here. All right.